فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم وأقسامه ثلاثة The types of categorization for kalima is a ismul wa fi'lun wa harfun ja'a li ma'nan So we're going to take each one Now when we take each one Brothers and sisters we're going to take it in the following Number one when we take ism, we're going to define what ism means. Okay, ta'riful ismi. Now, today you might see a student of knowledge and you ask him, what's the ism? He would, I don't know. We are going to take the definition of it, number one. Number two, we're going to take the types of ism there are. And number three, we're going to take the signs of the ism. And we'll do that for each and every one of them. We're going to do that for the isfi'il as well. And we're going to also do the same for harf. We're going to define what an ism means. We're going to tell you the types of ism there are. And we're also going to take the signs of the ism. Then we're going to do the same for the fi'il. We're going to, de defi we're going to define what fi'il is. We're going to mention the types of fi'il there are. And we're also going to tell you the signs of the fi'il. We're going to do the same for what? Harf. We're going to define what harf means. We're also going to mention to you the types of harf there are. And we're also going to what? We're also going to give you the signs of the harf. Does that make sense? Let's start with ism. Let's define what ism means. Ism is ma dalla ala. This is, okay, we're going to define it linguistically and then we're going to define it technically. Okay? What is ism linguistically? What does it mean in the language? What's the lexical definition of the word ism? The lexical definition of the word ism is It's anything that indicates and shows something. وَلِذَلِكَ The word ism Are you with me sisters and brothers? It comes from two root words. There's a khilaf amongst the scholars which of the two. I am not going to now do tarjih of the two. But there are two root words that the word ism comes from. Okay? Does anyone have an idea? What's the root word? There's two root words that it comes from. It is sumu, that's one. And the second one is was. The first one is sumu, sumu. Sumu means what? Al ulu wa To be uplifted and to be raised. So that's one root word that it comes from, some scholars say. The second one is wasm. Wasm means sign. They say those are the two meanings that the word ism comes from. Okay? Which of those are right? And why is it right? We will do that inshallah ta'ala in another place. But they say that these are the two root words that it comes from. Good. Do we now know what it means? Link lexically. We now want to know what it means te technically. Technically is the technical definition of the word ism is ma dallat ala ma'nan fi nafsiha. Something that has a meaning in and within it. For example, مو ح 
Muhammad. Muhammad is what? Muhammad is a ism. Very good. Muhammad is a? It's an ism. It's a what? It's an ism. Why is it ism? Because it has two things of our definition of an ism. The first one is Ma dallat ala ma'nan fi nafsiha. It shows a meaning in and within itself. Muhammad, does it have a meaning in and within itself? Yes. It means the one that is praised a lot. The one that's praised a lot is called what? Muhammad. الذي يحمد كثيرا Are you there? That's the meaning that's in it. There's a meaning in the word Muhammad. And what's the second point that it has to also have? Because so far, if we just stick at that point and we say it's anything that has a meaning in and within itself, then so does a verb. So we still haven't distinguished it from a verb. The way that we distinguish it from a verb is by adding a second part of a definition to it, which is walam yaktarin bi ahadi al azminati thalatha. ولم تقترن أما ولم يقترن بأحد الأزمنة الثلاثة. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? And it hasn't indicated any of the times, the past, present, or future. بأحد الأزمنة الثلاثة means what? Any of the times. So it doesn't show a past, it doesn't show a present, and it nor does it show a future. So that's what a Muhammad has to be. It doesn't show time. When I say Muhammad, do you think of the past? If I say Muhammad, do you think of the present? And if I say Muhammad, do you think of the future? No, you don't. Muhammad doesn't have that. I mean, of course, unless it's an individual by the name Muhammad, which was in the past, then this individual is what's making you go back to the past and think of it. But the name itself does not show time. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Yeah? So this is what ism means. Example of an ism is what? Muhammad, Ali, Rajul, Jamal, Nahar, Tufaha, Laymuna, all of these are nouns. They are isms. Ali is an ism. Muhammad is an ism. Rajulun is an ism. Jamalun, Kamal is an ism. Why is it ism? Because it falls under our definition. It has a meaning in and within itself, and it what? Huh? And it doesn't show time. Tufahatun, Laymunatun, Asan. All of those are, they are all isms. They are all isms. They all show meaning. فَكُلُّ وَاحِدٍ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْأَلْفَاضِ يَدُلُّ عَلَى مَعْنًا وَلَيْسَ الزَّمَانُ دَاخِلًا فِي مَعْنَاهُ And no time is in it. فَيَكُونَ اسْمًا so it's, a, it's, an, it's, it's an ism now. How many types of ism are there? How many types of? How many types of isms are there? The types of the types of uh, isms that there are are three. Now remember this number three. Three is a golden number for grammar. Every time you generally find three, 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 three. Ism is how many types? It's three types. Ism which is mubhar. Mubmar 
هم مبهم Those are the three. Those are what? They are the three. The first one is Mudhar. The second is Mudmar. And the third one is Mubham. Mubham, right? Are we all together? So the first one is Mudhar. What's Mudhar? What's Mudmar? And what's Mubham? Mubham. We will inshallah ta'ala touch that when we come to Babel Iraq. When we come to the chapter of Iraq, we're going to touch on each one what it is. Okay? As for you as an individual, you just need to know and understand that there are these three types. What they mean and in details, we'll speak about it inshallah ta'ala in the chapter of Iraq. Are we all together? Let's now move on to Let's now move on to the next one which is al fi'lu I'm missing something from a noun does anyone know what I what I haven't mentioned from the noun that I promise I will mention the signs of the noun right huh there's three things I said I'm going to tell you about each one right what was the first thing ta'rifuhu is definition did I give you the definition good and I promise you, I'll tell you the types of each one, right? And have I done that? Now we're left with the third thing. The third one, the author is going to bring. So there's no need for me to jump it. Sah? The author is going to mention it in the Mu'matan. So we're going to come to that, inshallah ta'ala. Now let's move on to the second type that the author mentioned, which is وَأَقْسَامُهُ The types of kalima is three. We mentioned ism. We're going to now move on to fi'l. We're going to move on to? We're going to now move on to fi'l. What's the definition of a fi'l? The loga, the lexical linguistic definition of a fi'l is al hadathu, event. Fi'l is an event that has happened. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? What is it? It is hadath. Hadath means what? An event that has happened. Now we've learned what it means in the lexical meaning and in its in the linguistic meaning. But what does it mean according to the grammarians? What do the grammarians consider as a verb? And in accordance to the definition of the grammarians, Fi'l is kalimatun dallat ala ma'nan fi nafsiha wa qtaranat bi ahadi al-azminati thalatha Remember what we said about a ism. What did we say? It's something that has a meaning in and within itself. So is a verb. Zahaba and ja'a are not the same meaning. Are they the same meaning? Zahaba and ja'a are two different meanings. Okay? Dahaba means went, Ja'a means came. So they have different meanings. But the difference here is not the first part of the definition. Because an ism, alay, fi'il, both of them have a meaning in and within itself. The difference is the second part of the definition, which is وَقَتَّرَنَتْ بِأَحَدِ الْأَزْمِنَةِ ثلاثة. That the verb, the verb has indicated and it has shown one of the tense. One of the tenses, whether it be past tense, present tense, or future tense. Does that make sense? The only difference is that a verb shows a what? It shows a time. It shows a tense. The verb, uh, the, the noun doesn't, the ism doesn't. So for example, for example, kataba. Let's look at that word. K 
Kataba. Kataba is what? It's a verb. What type of verb is that? Fi'il. Fi'il maadi. That's a past tense. Kataba, right? So kataba is a what? Fi'il maadi. You then have what? Yaktubu. Yaktubu. What's this one? Fi'il? This is fi'il? Mudari' means what? Present tense. Huh? Taktubu, ama yaktubu, ama uktub. Let's just go to. Yaktubu, right? Are we all together? Yaktubu means what? Huh? Present. Then we have Uktub. What does Uktub mean? Fi'il. Fi'il Amar. Fi'il Amar here is what? Huh? It's a command verb. But does, what does a command verb show? It shows the future, right? Because if I say to you, Uktub, write. When do you start writing? Uh, you write when I tell you, uh, in the future, after I've told you, right? So it's a form of future. So we have these three in the Arabic language. We have these. Some of the grammarians, they believe there's only two types. Some of the grammarians, they don't believe there's three types of tenses. They don't like this. They believe that the fi'il amar is actually part of the fi'il mudari'. And that it should have been taken, it should not be taken out of it. The reason why they say that, we will tackle when we come to Babul Irab. And we'll see why they said that. But the one we want to go according to is the view of the Jumhur al Nuhat, the majority of the grammarians. And the matter of taqsimat, categorization, is all based upon what? The concept of induction and uh, is all based upon ijtihad. It, it falls under. Personal reasoning. So it's not, none of the parties are saying that they have evidence. Qala Allah and Qala Rasul. So what's Madi? Fi'il Madi. Fi'il Madi is Madal ala hadatin waqa'a fi zamani ladi qabla zamani takallumi. It means, Fi'il Madi means past tense. It's something that has happened before the time of the speech. It has happened. Before the time of speech. Mubarak is what? Madalla ala hadatin yaqa'u fi zamani takallumi aw ba'dahu. Fi'il mubarak is what? The, uh, an event that has taken place at the time of speech, whilst the person is talking, or even a little bit after him. So, because mubarak sometimes can show a slight future, right? Does it, can it not? If you say, for example, somebody calls you and says to you, ah, what are you doing? What do you say? I am putting on my clothes, methylen. That's what you say, right? When you say, I'm putting on my clothes, you may not have even started putting on your clothes. Huh? It can show a future. That's a bit, huh? it does. And there are things that if they enter it, they force it to become a future. We'll see that, inshaAllah ta'ala. The last one is Al Amr. ما دل على حدث يطلب حصوله بعد زمان التكلم. Amr is what? It indicates an event that a person is being requested to come with something after the speech. So اكتب write. If have understand. اخرج leave. اسمع listen. Also, give victory, and etc. We've now finished the ta'rif of what? We finished the definition of what? Fi'il. We've also talked about, we also spoke about the types of, huh? The types of fi'il there are. 
We divided them into three. Fi'il madi, fi'il mudari, and fi'il amr. Right? What, have, what are we missing? What's the third thing that we're missing? Yeah? We're missing the signs of the verb. And as I said, that's going to come to us. That's going to come to us. Does that make sense? Very good. Now we're going to go into harf. Harf of lugha. What does harf mean in the language? What does harf mean what? In the language. The word harf in the language, it means at-tarafu. Taraf means side, edge. So the word harf in the linguistic lexical meaning is at-tarafu. Taraf, taraf. Sah? And the evidence for that is وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ حَرْفٍ There are some people who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the edge. They are on the edge when they're worshipping Allah. Meaning, this is like the munafiqeen. When the believers are enjoying themselves and the believers have money and the believers are the upper hand in the world, the munafiq is with the believers. So he jumps on the side of the unbelievers. But when he finds that the Muslims are struggling at that time and then they, they don't have the upper hand and that the kuffar have the upper hand, he jumps on the, uh, the bandwagon with the kuffar and he goes with them. So, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ حَرْفٍ فَإِنْ أَصَابَهُ خَيْرٌ إِطْمَعَنَّ بِهِ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتُهُ فِتْنَةٌ إِنْقَلَبَ عَلَىٰ وَجْهِ خَسِرَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةَ ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسَّرَانُ الْمُبِينَ There are people like that. They worship Allah on the edge. That when, they, when, they, when they're in a time of good, فَإِنَ أَصَابَتُهُ وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ حَرْفٍ فَإِنَ أَصَابَتُهُ فَإِنَ أَصَابَهُ خَيْرٌ إِطْمَعَ النَّبِيِّ If he good comes to him, he finds tranquility. He's happy. He's enjoying himself. And if he finds hardship and trials and tribulations thrown at him, وَإِنَ أَصَابَتُهُ فِتْنَةُ لِنْقَلَبَ عَلَىٰ And if it happens that he is afflicted with trials and tribulation, he turns on his heel. He apostates. He leaves Islam. He says, what's this religion? Huh? But this is very common when it comes to uh, reverts a lot of the time. A lot of the reverts, what happens to them is they were Christians or they were nothing, they didn't believe in God or anything. So what happens is they start to take a belief. They come into Islam. And when they come into Islam, guess what happens? They get tested. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tests them highly. They are put through a trial and a tribulation. What do they do? When they get child, when they get tested, they start thinking that the problem is coming from Islam. Some of them, they just leave, man. I can't take this. Uh, just yesterday, uh, a man called in, uh, somebody I was sitting with, a man called in and he spoke to the brother. He said, when I took Islam, my landlord doesn't, I can't, my landlord doesn't want to rent me my house. When I took Islam, I'm struggling to um, even get married now. When I took Islam, this is happening to me. When I took Islam, huh? So he's thinking this is all from Islam. So Allah tests subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah wants to see the strength of a believer. Like you have to realize one thing. If today somebody wants to be part of a uh, group, what do they do? They put him through a training course. To see, is he, is he, is he, is he made for this? They give him a probation period. And the religion of Islam is a religion that tests a person's claim of Iman. Do you just think you can just say, I'm a believer and no one's going to test that, that statement of yours? That statement is going to be put to the test. If you make it through, then mashallah, you're sticking to your belief. And if when you say, I'm a believer, you get tested, you leave, then you weren't really serious in the first place, were you? Yeah? Won't be serious. Naam. So the word harf, it means that in the language. What does it mean technically? Technically it means كَلِمَةٌ دَلَّتْ عَلَىٰ مَعْنًا فِي غَيْرِهَا What did we say that ism was? Ism has a meaning within itself. Remember we said that? And we said it also doesn't show time. What did we say a verb was? We said a verb 
has a meaning in and within itself and it also shows time. Harf on the other hand is it has no meaning. Harf has no meaning. Its meaning comes when it when it's put into a context. There's no meaning. So, that's why the grammarians they have a statement which is Al Huruf Yanubu Baduha Baba. That the huruf they can take each other's places. Sometimes you see fi taking the place of ala and ila and the lam taking the place of the ba and huh? they take each other's places. Because the meaning comes from what? The context. For example, the word min. What does the word min show? <coughs> the word min, what does it show? You can't give it a meaning. You can only give it a meaning when you put it into a context because there's so many meanings that the word min has. So, so example, the hab to min al bayti I left from the house. What the meaning does it have here? It has ibtida, meaning from beginning from somewhere. That's what it has. And sometimes you put it in another context, it has a different meaning. So, sometimes it can be tab'idiya, some. Huh? So what it is, is it's not clear unless you put it into a context. So the meaning of huruf is, it's nothing until a context restricts its meaning. Very good. I'm now going to, inshallah ta'ala, um, give you 10 words. You just have to mention if they are if they are a ism, if they are a fi'il, and if it's a harf. So write these words, inshallah ta'ala. So let me write the words on the board. Huh? For what? Even Matan hasn't mentioned it yet. 
Oh, no, 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 they should know it, they should know it. Definition. The definition. Okay, so, um, you have dib. So the first one is dibun. Dibun. Safara. Ila. Sofa. Namirun. Ijtahada. Amina. Warda. Illa. La'alla. So those are the words, inshallah ta'ala. They are ten. Each one, it's um, either an ism, fi'il, harf. The way you have to identify it is based on the definition I gave you. Which word does it have a meaning? Does it show a tense? You need to get that sorted, inshallah ta'ala. Um, I'm going to conclude here, inshallah ta'ala. And I'm going to stop every Tuesday is going to be from 7 to 9. Because 9 to 11, I have a class with the sisters downstairs. So the classes are going to be from 7 to 9 on Tuesdays, the grammar. So you guys got saved by the bell. Uh, some of you like grammar for four hours. So we take two hours. And the way that we did this class today is exactly how we're going to be doing it every day. Every, every, every week, every week, 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 week. Tomorrow we have which class? We have Matna Abi Shuja'a. It's a Shafi'i book. Should we do Matna Abi Shuja'a or should we do Adur uh, Bahiyya? Yeah? We'll just do bed bed we do bed we we'll do bed with Shafi'i. But we're not going to do it according to how the bed do it, we're going to do Qawlu Rajah. The bed is wrong, we'll say the bed is wrong. But it's of benefits to study the bed it really is. Um, anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me as shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik, ashadu wa la ilaha illallah, astaghfiru wa atubu ilayhi. Um, any questions? <laughs>